there. I just want to show you um, the importance of uh, introducing new things um, slowly and with awareness of how the horse feels about it. So I'm very excited that I got my uh, Bent Brandrup uh, education pad. It's a beautiful leather pad. It has no stirrups and it's a leather tree, so it's meant to improve uh, your riding, improve your seat, uh, so there's no dependence on stirrups. It's just about um, improving your seat. Um, and I have this felt uh, pad and this girth, which is super interesting. You can see how wide it is. Um, it's really wide. It's called a breathe girth and it's meant to um, make it easier for them to expand their chest when they're breathing and so it's quite wide and then it gets narrow as it goes near the elbows. Um, but uh, I approached Ginny with this today and she didn't want me to touch her with it. She wanted to smell it. She didn't want me to put it on her. I was just going to throw it on her. Actually, first I was going to throw it on Phoenix, my wild horse, and then I thought, well, maybe I should put it on Ginny first. Uh, and she's like, no way. And when it's my, the, the pad that she's familiar with, uh, this is the one I normally use from uh, Germany. It's called Fit Saddle. Um, she has no problem. She could care less because it has her smell and phoenix and hay and all the smells that she knows uh, that she's familiar with but this stuff that uh, smells different to her feels different to her even the girth being so wide will feel very very different for her so um so it's super important to uh approach uh with these new things in a very calm and quiet way so I'm just going to do that and just uh, let you see how that works. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I just showed her the, the felt pad and she didn't want me to put it on her. So um, I might even just leave it here in the box. You can kind of see it's in a box here. And, um, and let them come and look at it and smell it on their own without any pressure. Um, and that will probably help quite a bit too, but I like to be really uh, considerate of that. Like some horses are so like no big deal, but my horses are all fairly sensitive, fairly reactive. And so I do take all things slowly with them. And if I do that, they're really good for me. Like they try really, really hard. They want to uh, cooperate with me, but they are just more sensitive and more reactive. And so, see now Ginny is starting to smell it, which is great. She is a brave horse, but she doesn't like me approaching her with new things too quickly. So as long as I consider that and pay attention, uh, then I'm fine. And when I didn't do that, um, I got injured. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a brave rider. I'm turning 60 this year. I don't want to get injured. So for me, it's just smart to take things slowly and, uh, and wait for them to be ready for things. So now that she's come back, she even walked away when I first opened it up. She didn't want to be around it at all. Now that she's come back, maybe I'll start showing her things and letting her smell them. So I'll just let you watch. Like she is curious and she likes to investigate, but she doesn't want me just throwing something on her that she doesn't know anything about. She wants to know that it's a safe thing for, for me to touch her with. What do you think? Is that acceptable? Yeah. So she's relaxing more and showing more of an acceptance of this. I'll see if she'll let me come closer with it.
And I, I'm a real believer in rewards, so I always reward her for um, showing interest and showing curiosity and wanting to inspect things. Rather than run away, I want her to, to be curious and, and look at things. And so it's up to me to present things in a way so that I maintain that curiosity rather than a fear response to something new. So let's see if she'll let me try. See, she still doesn't want me to touch her. So I'll show you, because you might think, well, maybe she's like that with everything. So I'll just try with the pad that she's used to and just see what difference there is. So she's taking a smell there. So that worked well with something that she's familiar with. She did kind of hesitate and take a step back. So now I'll see if I can do the same thing with something new. Yeah, that went really well because I took the time and I, I did something with something she's used to and then she realized no big deal. So now I'll try with the, the leather pad, which will feel quite different to her than the um, pad she has been using because it's a felt a pad. So now to ha this will smell different. It'll, it's a different weight. Uh, so uh, the way it feels on her back will be very different. So it's important for her to have time for that. So that's also going really well. Um, she has had a variety of saddles on her, so that's why I'm testing it on her first. Uh, with Phoenix, he's only had the felt pad. And one day um, I put it on him and the girth was really cold. And just doing that up, he, he felt the difference and he bolted. Uh, so it made me realize how important it is for me to take things slowly, especially for him. Uh, so now I'll try this. I'm not sure if this is going to fit her because I did have this uh, made for Phoenix and he's quite a bit smaller than her. So I'm just going to give it a shot. So I always do these things at liberty um, so that they don't feel confined, so they feel like they can move if they're worried about it. And I find um, they actually accept new things better when I do it at liberty because they don't feel restricted, so they're not as fearful. Um, Ginny, when I got her, she was a horse that would bolt and buck and even kick and bite a little bit not because she's mean but because she's 
really reactive and she felt overwhelmed really easily. Um, so uh, I had to approach her in a very slow way and build her confidence. And now I can do almost anything with her because I've done that. She's very willing and very cooperative uh, because I did take that time. So, um, but she's also a horse that shows me very clearly if something doesn't work for her. She's very emotional, uh, which for me is good because then I know exactly um, what's going on. There's no surprises with her usually. The girth is quite small, so I just have to bring it down another side. So you sh can see she's staying really calm and and uh, really quiet with the whole process, even though it's taking a while. She's she's very cooperative, uh, so not a problem there at all. The leather is a bit stiff too, so I'm not pulling too tight on anything. So you can see she's doing really well with that. She's going back to eating. So what I'll do now is I'll just leave it on and let her eat. And the leather is super stiff, so I want it to kind of soften up with her body heat. And I'll gradually tighten things up, uh, you know, through uh, the next hour uh, with leaving it on. And uh, yeah, she's accepting that very well. So um, once it sort of gets her smell on it and it gets softened up a bit, uh, then I feel that Phoenix will uh, accept it much better because uh, new things for him are a little harder because he is a wild horse. Okay, it's a bit of a longer video. Hopefully that helps you when you're introducing new things to your horses, especially young horses that don't have a lot of experience or um, uh, just some horses are just really sensitive and they just need you to take this kind of time. 
Uh, I've been to all kinds of events over the years, endurance shows, horse shows, you know, all kinds of camping and stuff. And usually when I saw people having problems, it's because they were introducing a new equipment at an event where the horse was already a bit nervous about the event. And then maybe they used a new girth or a new bit. Um, and I've seen some pretty dramatic reactions, some pretty big bucks that the owner said the horse didn't do normally. Uh, but it, because they were in a stressful environment, and then they put something new on them, not really thinking it would be a problem. It really was a problem. So to keep things safe, you know, uh, like for me, uh, like I say, I'm not brave, but I'm careful. And so I've been able to do a lot of uh, interesting things over the years um, just by being a bit slower and being a bit more careful. Um, yeah, so... Um, and yeah, I'm 60. I want to keep training horses. I want to keep training young horses. I want to keep training wild horses. I really like them a lot and I, I like doing it. So uh, to be safe, I just have to think ahead, be prepared, go slow, watch for the horse's uh, reaction, uh, comfort or discomfort. And then I believe that I can keep doing this no matter how old I get. See, here's Phoenix, my wild guy, checking out the cardboard box. So I try to allow them to see all kinds of things. He's, he's quite curious. Um, so I'm setting him up to, to uh, so you now I have a treat. And there's even some plastic in here. Okay. So I'll show it to him. Oh. Jazz is in the way. There you go. So the more you can expose them to the better. Um, uh, they'll just, then they're prepared for everything. So plastic, we all know, can be a real trigger. So I intentionally make noise and see he's not running away. And then I give him a treat. So I, I intentionally work on things that... Um, I think my horses might be afraid of and and then I stay with them and I I stay calm and I give them treats and I reassure them and then it ends up just not being an issue at all. See how close he is to the plastic now? And, uh, and he's okay. See he's coming and reaching even though the plastic is right there. So, so and he's a horse that I didn't um, I got him at six years old, uh, and he was completely wild. He was living on the range, um, on the Indian reservation here. And so now, you know, uh, that's a lot older than most people train wild horses. And you can see, even though, see, he's actually smelling and touching the plastic now. So if you, if you have patience and you take the time and you do a lot of positive reinforcement, there's no reason for them to not want to do these things. Good boy. See, and he came to me to do this. I didn't force any of it on him. He's inspecting the box now, putting his nose in it. So anything you can do to encourage them to be brave and curious and, and rather than run away, investigate, uh, will make your riding experience so much better. So rather than bolting when you're riding, they'll turn around and want to look and uh, examine what's there. And that is just so much safer. So here you can see. Okay. 